You're watching EVH Gear TV. Official Van Halen merchandise for EVH Gear TV is provided by VanHalenStore.com. Now, here's your host from Ontario, Canada, EVH Gear artist, Eric Broadbent. everyone, it is Friday, Friday, June 2nd. It's a weekend. Uh, welcome to EVH Gear TV. I'm thrilled to have everyone joining us. I have a great guest this evening. A lot of people have been talking about this one for a while. Mark Day from Fractal Audio. Mark, how are you, man? Good, Eric. How are you? I'm doing very, very good. A little sunburned, as I was just telling you off the uh, <laughs> off the air. Got a little too much sun today, and you had the opposite today. Yeah. <laughs> a Lots of black and rain and cold, and I've still got my heater running here down in the basement in my studio so that... I don't freeze. Oh, it's that literally that cold. Yeah, it's awful. It's oh, that's like, not good. I think it's about fourteen degrees it hit today. Not good. It it was cool for us here in, in my part of Ontario here. Um a little bit at first and the boys were in shorts to school for track and field kind of stuff today and, and I thought oh, this is gonna be a little cool. And then you know, within an hour or two it was um not not blistering heat or anything like that, but the sun was a little more intense than we thought and we both got a little bit too much sun. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, we're, we're here and whether we're cold or hot, we're talking about some guitar and some fun stuff like that. Uh, so we should, we should be ready to rock and roll folks. We got some good stuff in store tonight. Mark's going to show us some, uh, some cool fractal product as well. And we're going to obviously talk about the man himself, Eddie Van Halen. We're going to talk some, probably some futon, a little bit of everything. Uh, we've got a bunch of people joining in the chat and I'll jump over there soon. And, um, we'll uh, recognize everyone in the chat, but at first let's jump right into it, Mark. So how long, when, like, when did you get into playing guitar? How old were you when you started? Um, I was 17 years old, so that would have been around uh, 1978. That'll show my age to everybody. So uh, 1978 was the first time I, I was, uh, I guess what started me about the whole thing was uh, some friends had a Kiss Alive record. Oh, right on. And, and I just thought, what is that sound? You know, like I, I remember hearing Cold Gin and that, that intro to Cold Gin was just mesmerizing for me. Yep. And, uh, I thought, man, if there's a device out there that can make strings sound like that, I want it. I want to do that. I, that's what I want to do. I want to make that noise, that powerful noise that's coming out of my speakers right now. It was just, it was just intense for me. And, you know, Kiss was always larger than life. And, and it, it just like, it was, as a 17-year-old, it was just like, my eyes just were wide open and, and in awe of this, of this music and this band. And, and that's, that's why I picked up a guitar. That's good. That's, that's, uh, that's great. And myself as well, Ace Frehley, is to this day is still one of my guitar heroes, a huge guitar hero. Even though you know, he's not the shredder that some of these other guitar players are that we talk about, but he started it all for us for sure. And I think probably if I was to take a survey of all the bands that I talk about on the show other than Van Halen, Kiss, I, I swear to God, it's got to be almost every episode. There's got to be one Kiss reference. Uh, what yeah. they did, the Kiss Alive was great. Um, I think I was talking about that at a recent show a while back. Wasn't that the album where they had the uh, the trading cards that come with it as well? Didn't it come in that ep? Was it that one or Kiss Alive too? There was like trading cards and posters and stuff. This one because I had the record and, and there was no tra I didn't get any trading cards anyways. I think okay, unless let's... I got off or something. But that was uh, it. Could have been Kiss Alive too, but Maybe. I, I stopped. I stopped following Kiss when I started hearing other bands like. Um, you know, Thin Lizzy and uh, and White Snake and uh, and uh, of course uh, Van Halen. Yeah, of course, yeah, <laughs> of course that changes everything. Yeah, I still remember being introduced to Van Halen because I'd I'd only been playing a little while at this point, and uh, it was again 1978 or so, and uh, a friend of mine came over to my basement and I was playing guitar and he said, "You got to hear this," and he put on Eruption. Okay, that was the first thing you heard by him? And and I just I didn't know what to do. It was it was like I didn't know if I wanted to cry and burn my guitar or or just give up or or cuz it was just, you know, by this time I, you know, I was I was playing Thin Lizzy songs and Bad Company songs and Zeppelin songs and and stuff like that. And I thought it was hot stuff. And, <laughs> Back in 1978, there wasn't a lot of guitar players around as there are today. Like, yeah, and there's no way to learn the guitar by YouTube or tablature or anything like that. It was it was oh, drop the needle on 
record and and try and guess what the guy was playing. So, uh, you know, when I heard the Van Halen, it was just it was just it was just ridiculous. Uh, I I was depressed for probably weeks after that because I thought <laughs> there's no way on God's green earth that I'm going to ever play like that guy, and he was just you know. And, and then I heard, you know, you really got me on on the radio. And I thought, that guitar sounds like it's going to blow up. It's just, it's so evil and great at the same time. It was just so powerful uh, listening to that, you know, the, those chords coming in. You know, first of all, sometimes the radio station would play Eruption before you really got me. Oh, yeah. And, and it was just, just amazing. So... That was my introduction to Van Halen. Fantastic. And that was the second question I was going to ask you as well, too. And it's amazing how everyone has a story. And I would love to say, I mean, I could lie and say I was I discovered Van Halen by eruption, but I didn't. Um, and I came in a little bit late. I came in on their third album. And it, my cousin had um, Women and Children First on vinyl and was playing me that. And I heard, um, what did he play me? He played me in the Cradle Will Rock. And a lot of times I talk on the show about songs, how you discover a band and where does that fit into your life today? Is it still your favorite, whatever? And that song is one of my least favorites of Van Halen. I love it, but it's my least favorite, if that makes any sense. So that's how I discovered them. And I thought this was really, really cool. This sounds really got me intrigued. And I was like, okay, let's, what else is on this record? You start listening to this stuff and you get right into it. I was like, okay, well, what else? do they have other records? And then of course they do. They have two prior and then, they, you know, maybe they might have had one more at the time after as a young kid. And I was like, I started discovering them and then rediscovering them. And to this day, like it's, it's, it's still, it's still so fresh. You go back and listen again and again and again, and it never gets old. Yeah. It's just uh, that, especially for me, because it was in my formative guitar years, you know, I was 17 years old, it was 1978, that's when the record came out. It was very relevant to me. Um, I just, that first record, I just, I wore it out 10 times. Oh, yeah. It was just, it was just amazing. And, and you know what? When, when I was young, I never even bothered trying to learn it. Yeah. Because it's just, it was just too much. You know, you could play maybe the beginning chords for sure. you really got it. But uh, everything else was just, it was just over my head. And uh, by that time I was playing in a band and we were doing covers and, you know, Zeppelin and some Rush stuff and, and things like that. But we didn't touch the Van Halen because it was just, for me, it was just too much. I never, I never grasped onto it. I was, I was very, I was a slow learner, so to speak. Yeah, I hear you on that one. And you know what's funny with me, too? Like, I, I never touched it until later uh, times in my life as well, too. But here's something, another thing I never talk about on the show, um, other than, you know, vocals. I talk about Dave Lee Roth a lot. But a lot of bands will shy away from doing Van Halen. And, of course, I wanted to do a lot of Van Halen in my bands. Uh, we were an original band, but we do a couple covers. And for a while, we were a heavy cover band with some originals. So we, we was always mixed around a little bit like that. But, of course, being the Eddie Van Halen fan that I am, I wanted to do several Van Halen songs. And the bass player, as much as we butted heads a lot, he had some practical sense to him. He would say, well, we can't do that. There's, you know, there's three or four harmonies in that. And I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, we can do it without the harmonies. And like, he he insisted, no, we're not going to do it. We can't do the harmonies. And sure enough, like, you know, there's a lot going on just in the vocals alone in that band that a lot of people yeah. just take for granted. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Anthony and Eddie's uh, vocal background. And it, it, there's a lot of really... It's a very distinctive, like, like his guitar playing. He's got some very distinctive things with his guitar playing. The vocals are very distinctive, too. The harmonies are very much part of the Van Halen sound. For sure. Alex's snare. I yes, mean, yep. It's one of those iconic bands that, as soon as you hear that snare drum, you know it's Van Halen. That's as right. As soon as you hear the harmonies, you know it's Michael Anthony and, and, and that part of the harmony. And as soon as you hear Eddie's guitar you know it's Eddie. So they have a lot of things going on that that make up that band that are very distinctive and very unique to Van Halen and and and, and it's kind of cool is it's every guitar player's uh, goal I think to have their own signature sound so that when they play three notes everybody in the world knows who it is. That's right. And Eddie's one of those players, you know. I agree. Just, each one of those things that you mentioned too is its own voice. The snare is its voice. The guitar is its voice. 
you know the harmonies are its voice everything everything has that and there are there are some other players too and i know you're, you're friends with some of these people i'm just gonna throw a few names out there but i can i can say that these guitar players are that same type thing and this was this is what's nice i don't have this on my agenda for the evening but this we're, we're kind of going on a nice flow here um i always like to hypothesize and say okay let's take some guitar players that we just cannot take out of a band and they can't be replaced uh number one alex lifeson from rush love him to death you cannot take him out of the band uh, and replace him with somebody else. Uh, Edge from you too, I'd say, and I'm going to have you comment back on a few as well too. Um, who was I just thinking a moment ago? Uh, uh, Tom Morello, I love him as well too. Um, a, a phenomenal, like I mean, just groove. Slash is another one. He's got his own. You know, each of these guys, you hear their sound and you recognize them right away. You throw a few at me, and what, do you, what would you say? Lukather. Oh, Luke there he goes. Luke is my man. He's yeah. just. Uh, I mean, there's another icon that, that doesn't get his just desserts, you know. No, he doesn't. You, you've got the Jimi Hendrixes and you've got the Yngwie Malmsteins and the Eddie Van Halens and the Gary Moores and, and guys like that that are amazing players and they get what they deserve. Uh, where Lukather is on just about every song from 1978 till about 1990 something. He's on every song in the world. I know. He, just, he is, you know, Michael Jackson's Thriller. That that's that's Toto. That's it that's sure Steve is. Lee. It sure Carol. is. Rich tone. Yeah, and and his, you know, you hear Lionel Richie and Steve's playing. You hear Chicago, Steve's playing. Um, you know, it's just uh, he's just an amazing player and and such a funny guy. I've I've had the opportunity to do some work with Steve through Rack Systems and, and Friedman, and. Um, you know, he's such a funny guy and down to earth and and to sit there in a room with that guy playing through his rig that just got, you know, tweaked or whatever mm -hmm. and listen six feet away is just mind boggling. The guy is just an absolute genius and so grounded too. you know, he just uh, so um, down to earth for sure, down to earth, not conceited, not and and. You know, he's like, ah, so many guys out there that play so much better than me. No, Steve, no. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's just got, you know, a great vibrato, great feel. He's just a, an amazing songwriter. I, I can't say enough good things about him. Um, George Lynch. Oh, for uh, sure. There's a guy with his own style. Uh, I, I know he's been duplicated mm -hmm. <laughs> with with the, the new guy in Dawkins, but... Uh, Still, George is the original, and and he's a he's a great player, and who was hugely influenced by Van Halen, for sure. Um, Same circuit not, there for a while too. Not so much copying him, but competition for him. Oh, big time! And, and almost, you know, we all know the story about how, um, you know, they were doing a showcase in L.A. and Van Halen was the warm up act, and, and George was just mortified after seeing Eddie play that he decided to get into the woodshed and just, you know, hone the skills. And, and it was successful for him because he, he did, he does have a, he doesn't sound like Van Halen at all. He, no. he has his own. So, um, that, that's an influence that Eddie has too, is that I find with Eddie, when he came out, it was just, it was like a slap in the face of the whole world of guitars. And it was it was a wake up call for for everybody that you have to do better. You have to you're you're going to have to be more innovative to get noticed because this guy is just a monster. Mm -hmm. And it created all these other guys, you know, like George Lynch and and uh, Malmsteen, and it, it just brought in this whole wave of guitar players in the '80s because because of Eddie. That's right. We had to compete with Eddie. So. Um, because of Eddie, we have a lot of different styles and different guitar players that that really came out because of Eddie, or or because they had to compete with Eddie. So it's it's a cool thing. That's right. And back in that day too, until Eddie came out, and like like you say, kind of raised the bar. You know, the local hotshot guitar player that's not good enough anymore. You can't just be the local suburban LA, a uh, well, little suburban LA, being the hotshot in your little city. Uh, that doesn't count. 
Now you got to come to the table with something, you know, massive, like the George Lynch's, the mom scenes, you know, the, you know, everything that came from there, the Satriani's and so on and so forth. And uh, back in the day too, there was just a small, very, very small handful of guitar players, at least that you could count on one hand that were the, the guitar, future guitar gods. Now we've got a, like a million of them. Uh, some of them are, are clones of one another and things like that. But back then, I mean, uh, if you come to the table without uh, your A game, uh, no one's going to hear you. Yeah, and now there's so many great players like on YouTube and stuff. It's just you just I just shake my head. I just I know I, I've given I've given up the co- competition. Um, I I do what I do, and that's what it is. And yeah. I, not going to be one of those guys because no. I, I'm 56 years old and and uh, I mean I struggle with what I do so I'm going to just stick with what I do. Well that's very cool and I have the same analogy as well too and the way I look at it is uh, some some people can look at, at people that are way better than them than them and they can either get discouraged like you said burn your guitar or whatever uh, or they can they can resort to where some people go that oh you suck because you know we were joking about this yesterday you get some haters the odd time we we all do right and p- people usually hate on you because they want to do what you can do or, or whatever but um, the thing is you try to channel that and what I try to do is okay yeah I'd love to do what this guy's doing here like I don't sweep pick at all I cannot do I cannot sweep pick to save my life I'd love to do it but I thought you know what. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to concern. I'm not going to focus all my energy on that. I can improve a couple other areas that will have some, you know, some more taste in my music. I'll work on that. Yeah. You have to have content in your playing to the point where not to say, oh, I'm a great guitar player. Not to say that at all. This, I'm happy with this. I do this pretty cool. I like this. I like this about my playing. Be content. Pick up a couple things along the way and just have yeah. fun. And that's all it's all about, especially when you get to be our ages. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I try to better myself every day. Of course. You know, I, I, my guitar and and uh, you know, work on different things, and 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 you know, muddle through things, and learn different things, and um, you know, it, it's 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 good to keep learning. But I'm never going to be one of those guys. I'm yep. never going to be a mathematician on guitar. No, I can't. I can't do that. I failed math in school, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm going to flunk on guitar that way too. So. And you were talking about haters. That, of course, we had a funny thing yesterday. Yep. Funny for me, you know, somebody tried to get my goat and. Uh, <laughs> didn't work it just made me laugh so i posted it and it, it was just funny you know some guy i for the people out there that that didn't that aren't aware of the the hater the hater said uh, that i was uh so my vibrato, vibrato was was like a old man cake eating fat guy vibrato. <laughs> that's what it was an old man too heavy handed fat guy vibrato cake eating vibrato you know yeah. it's like yeah yeah i'm not fat that's right I, I i'm a skinny guy yeah there you go and then you get people like steve stevens jumping in on the conversation we're all we're all chiming in on that and like steve stevens yeah. praising you and i mean that's with that's as enough right there when steve stevens praises you and says look you're great man and that's something i didn't get a chance to tell you this i was watching you play I was watching you, and I got I got kind of the privilege the other night, and you guys are all going to maybe get a privilege tonight to get to see Mark play as well too. But Mark was playing some guitar for me last night, and, and I never did tell you this, Mark, and I and I um, this is sincerity. I've never seen relaxed hands. Like I thought, okay, I thought there was a, a delay with the connection we had because you're playing, and you were worried about that. You thought there might have been some delay with our, our video, and you're playing, and you are the most relaxed technique. Your, your picking technique and your fret technique is amazing it, it is very very original so that i put a link to your youtube in the description below as well too i want people to subscribe to you i really think you'll be in for a treat but um that's that's from my heart you are a very relaxed player and what you do i don't i don't get it um you know what i i look at myself now because i'm i obviously put myself out on on youtube and stuff and sometimes i think uh, it looks weird you know i just think it looks weird but what happened? I should tell you the story if if you're interested. Oh, of course um, I am. Um, when I was young and playing in a band, you know, we, we it was uh, I think it was 1981, and I just happened to be working for a school board at the time in the in the media department, and we had these cameras. We had you know three quarter inch uh, videotape cameras, and we had this show to do at a high school. Um, with the band and I decided that we were going to bring these cameras and, and videotape ourselves mm-hmm. and when I and at that time I was pretty happy with myself you know I, I thought you know we have a good band we're pretty popular 
Uh, everybody likes my sound. It's my thing. And um, I watched the videotape, and I was horrified by the way my hands looked and the way my vibrato sounded. I had this nervous, you know, the nervous Kirk Hammett, I yeah. should say. Yeah, I know what you mean, God. but, yeah. You know, he's a nice man and stuff, um, but, you know, he, he has a very fast, nervous type vibrato, and 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 I would, you know, I don't know if you can see that, but, mm -hmm. you know, I use my vibrato with my fingernail kind of thing like that and, you know, make it sound like that. And, and my fingers were flying off the fretboard, and, and it just looked and sounded awful. Okay. And, and I thought... I got to change this. This is terrible. So uh, at the time I, I went out and I, I found, uh, it was just in the, the, the introduction of VHS out in the world. And, um, there was a, um, a live REO Speedwagon concert on videotape that you could rent from the local video store. Nice. And it was the only tape I could find. There was no other concerts. It was the only one. And I discovered Gary Mitchell, a guitar player from REO Speedwagon. And he had this this great uh, wide vibrato, and his hands looked so like no other word for it, but beautiful. The way he the way his hands moved were just it was just to me it was just like wow that guy's so great. So I really worked on that, and and for you guys out there that that are frustrated with vibrato or or, or whatever your bending technique or the way your hands look. What I did went back then was I'd play in front of a mirror, and I'd watch myself. It helps. So I'd duplicate what I was seeing on on the videotape that I watched, and and uh, I wound up getting uh, over time um, for me the vibrato technique that I wanted. And at the same time, when I would rehearse, it's it's a very strange thing, but I would because I didn't want my fingers to fly off the fretboard. I wanted to be really economical with my hand movements. Mm -hmm. I practice in front of a table with a flat edge so you couldn't so go any further couldn't go any further so i was i was stuck i was i was stuck in a small room so to speak gotcha with my thing yeah kind of panned yourself yeah. into a corner a little bit yeah and i would practice like that and that's how because i get that question a lot you know how, how did you develop that economical kind of finger technique and and that's how i did it i i just really concentrated on not moving my fingers very much and um and and playing up against the table with a with a wide flat edge so that I couldn't move my fingers anymore and and that's what I would do that for hours and just sit there in front of the table and then also watch myself in the mirror so that I would make sure that my vibrato technique and my bending technique was good and I found that if it looked good it also sounded good yeah and vice versa if it sounded good it looked good so that was my my uh, education on vibrato and bending and, and hand techniques. I love it. And because you did that against the edge for so long, eventually when you walk away from it, you think you're still there. So it comes, uh, you know, second, second hand to you. Yeah. Guitar playing is all muscle memory. So yeah. uh, once, you, once you develop the muscle memory, then it kind of sticks. That's right. We hope. That's my yeah, memory. We, we <laughs> hope so. We hope so. Well, that's one thing I really did enjoy it. I really, I really did watch, enjoyed watching you play like that. I'm going to jump over to chat just for a real quick second. I'm unfortunately, I've, um, a few people I haven't said hi to yet, so we'll do that real quick. A lot of people watching right now. I don't even actually see who, how many people are watching more. I turned that feature off just so I can focus on the show and the chat. Um, but we've got Mystic Star joining us, Wyatt Hunt. My beautiful Poison Ivy's uh, running the chat here for me. Gary Davlin, Ron Paget, Insomniac Matt. Uh, let me see. Did it, I, I like this. This is actually a good play on words. Did everyone mark the day on their calendars? I love that. You get that play on words? That's a good one. Did everyone mark That's the day on the calendars? That's I'll have to remember that one. And I don't even think he necessarily, uh, maybe he did mean it as a pun. I don't know, but that's a good pun. Uh, I guess Poison Ivy caught it, so I guess it was a pun. Uh, Bruce is joining us, says all. Carlos Santon, happy Friday. Another fellow Canadian like us as well. Uh, he says, I love Mark Day, one of my favorites. You'd be surprised, Mark, how many people, uh, I mean, you probably wouldn't be surprised because you, you, you're friends with a lot of um, uh, celebrities and whatnot, but there's been people buzzing my ear like crazy. Mark Day's coming on, Mark Day's coming on. People entering my guitar contest, giving away a guitar. Oh, I th in, the, in the video they're talking about, oh, Mark Day's coming up right away. So people are really excited about this one, as am I, of course. So, I really appreciate that. Oh, no problem. Uh, continue on. We got JD Gonzalez uh, says, hey, Eric and Mark. Uh, Bruce, Eric and Poison Ivy. Uh, let me see. MB215, what's up, everyone? Been waiting for this guy. See, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? I'm not lying. 
Uh, Adam EVH is saying, hey, everyone, Brandon Hall, first time tuning into this. Hey, that's great. I'm very, I'm going to remember that name, Brandon. Thank you for joining us, and I hope to uh, see you back again. Tactical Six String is one of our favorites here that really loves you as well, too. He's a huge fan. He literally mentioned your name in the guitar contest, which is great. Uh, here's another here's another one we didn't mention and for sure we want to talk about some cool vibrato and uh, the delicate tech technique as well too Tony Iommi oh yes yep. yes yeah we both we both missed him and and friends with all these people that we talked about the Eddie Van Halens and all these other people uh, let me see here Carl Santen says Brandon you're going to love it welcome so that the fans tell all the other new fans what the show's all about um, Bruce is saying I remember each vinyl solo album had a poster that puzzle piece together with the other three and made a giant poster uh, let me see here. Uh, and this this is um, something that uh, MB215 is pointing out. And we'll talk about this a little bit later um, in the program. But he says, heard Metallica is using Axe FX. Just saw the 512 in Philly. And the guitar sounded great. And a ton, I mean, a ton of people in the comments uh, to keep talking about how good the guitar sounded that night. Yeah, I have a question for Mark that later in the program that deals explicitly with that. So we'll talk about that as well, too. Darren Moore, a good friend from uh, from Lapeer, Michigan, is joining. Says, hello, everyone. Time for a great show. Thank you, Darren. Uh, let me see here. Uh, we talked about some of the first songs that P- uh, we uh, we heard as Van Halen. Yours was Eruption, mine was an Incredible Rock. Uh, Insomniac says, uh, I think the first song I heard by Van Halen was either Panama or Jump. Yeah, a lot of people get introduced into the Jump because that's when it becomes so mainstream that almost every radio station was playing it. Crossed formats all over, right? It's true. Yeah. Uh, Dirty Apes saying, hey, everybody. Uh, I'll get down to the bottom of the flag at the end here, and then we'll continue on. Um, Carlos Santana Eruption was the very first thing I ever heard from Van Halen. It was life changing to say the least. It sure was. Uh, Wide Hunt saying Hot for Teacher was the first thing I heard from Van Halen. Rick Kreifeld. I'm not sure if you know Rick from Idea Bench. Uh, you have to look them up if you don't. IdeaBench.com. They're the maker of my pedal board. You can barely see it right now. It's that red uh, red device behind me. Uh, from, oh yeah. Yeah. It's it's really really cool. It's like the the hot rod of pedal board. So Rick's joining us. Thanks, Rick. I appreciate that. Uh, he hey, says uh, grilling burgers and drinking a Friday beer. That sounds like a great idea. I grilled a nice t-bone steak before the show it was nice and i had a nice cold one as well and now i'm having a hot coffee um let me see here blackie dh says hey eric ivy and all we're almost down to the bottom i think um uh, blackie dh is joining us carlos santa luke Lukather is a monster player no doubt about that and you know what i'm glad i mentioned steve stevens a moment ago because um both steves steve Lukather reminds me a lot of steve stevens and the fact that these guys can step aside and let the, the jobs be done by the rest of the band and be a phenomenal, like a, a, a phenomenal lead player, but never get in the way. Do you, you know what I mean by, when I say that? Yeah, they play for the songs. Yes. Yeah. They're not they're not there to be guitar players. They're there for the songs. And, and that's, and, and it must be at times hard to hold back when you're that talented. I, I, I've had a chance to work with Steve uh, Stevens a few times mm-hmm. and, and it's just such a monster guitar player. Sweet guy too, just totally down to earth and uh, wonder, wonderful people. Him and his wife, uh, they're just uh, really, really cool, really cool cats for sure. They and are. I've been to some shows and and you know got to witness uh, Steve, you know, jamming at rehearsal and and at his home and um, just uh, just a superb player. Just so much feel and and so underrated, you know. I agree. People, People here, you know, think think that Steve is all about White Wedding and Rebel Yell, but he's, I mean, he's so great. What a great player! Just he is. Mon- his flamenco stuff is, ugh. yeah, it's out of this it's world. Incredible. It's out of this world, and it's it's funny that you mentioned both him and Josie too, because they, I think, they're one of the Hollywood's uh, happiest rock and roll, I mean, happiest couples. Period. And they, yeah. they're the perfect, perfect pair. Um, I've, I've dealt with both of them on numerous times and, and both treat me very, very nice. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm trying to put this pick in a frame. Uh, little Eric was fighting me for this one. I was sitting right beside me. I've got Steve's pick with uh, uh, Steve on one side and obviously he's got Josie and the, uh, the ray gun on the other side. So nice. very, very cool. I mean, that's just awesome. I'm starting a nice rock hall of fame over here and got a nice sign thing from Gary or from, from Steve and one from Gary Hoey and a bunch of other guests that have been on the show. I got to get you to send me one later on too. I want your, your mug on my wall too. So find a picture and send it to me and autograph it and a pic. We have, have Mark Day picks too. Oh, you got Gravities. Right Gravity. on. Yeah. Great right. picks. I love Cool. I got some of those here. Eric's got some as well, Eric Jr. I always try to share. Whenever I get multiple, I like to share with him because he's having a real nice guitar uh, pick collection too. So I like to try to uh, pass them off. Got a, Actually, I'm wearing the Van Halen Rising shirt, but Greg Renoff sent us some Van Halen Rising guitar picks as well too. They're quite nice. 
Very, very cool. Um, so yeah, I'm just talking about the monster players. That's good. Jimmy Page. Obviously, how could we forget Jimmy Page? <laughs> yeah, of we, we forgot somebody. Just a minor player, right? Just Jimmy Page. Yeah, just Jimmy Page. Love yeah. Jimmy Page. And that was another life altering thing. Was the the solo to Stairway to Heaven? I it mean, sure was. was. Yeah, know, that's. I was a kid when that came out, so that was you know in my formative years, you know. So it was it was a cool song. And that's that song, and I don't talk about Led Zeppelin enough. I don't give them the respect that I should on the show. I love them. I mean, I, I shouldn't say I love them like I love Van Halen because I love the music, but I'm not the I'm not the uh, encyclopedia of um, Led Zeppelin like I'm kind of with Van Halen. So I, you know, I don't know the facts. I don't know this, and I don't know that. I just know the good music. But you'll Stairway to, to what's that? You'll have, you'll have to have Roxy on the show. She knows everything about Zeppelin. Okay. Everything inside and out, inside and out. Yeah, Perfect. That'd a, be fun an encyclopedia led zeppelin <laughs> well what i do like about it the one thing i do know and this is very little but with stairway to heaven you could take that and you could compare it to eruption and i think people are going to say okay what are you what are you talking about are you crazy i don't mean in musical styles i mean to break that down and learn it and figure out parts there you even eruption being a minute and 42 seconds you have to chop that thing into about 16 18 parts uh stairway to heaven probably 60 parts you know, because there's so much going on. You think it's just going to repeat this verse over again. There's little nuances that Jimmy Page does different every single time. Throws you for a curve. When you think he's going right, he goes left. Um, it's not as easy as what you think. No, no. He has a very unorthodox style. So it was, it was, it was fun to figure out when I was when I was 18 years old for sure. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy Page still kicking, still respected, still, and he's loving a lot of this new talent that's out there. Um, I follow him in social media, and I'm always seeing them sharing and liking a lot of these new up and comers and really putting some stock into them. Um, you know, so it's really cool to see that. You know, you think these guys are just high and mighty and they don't care, but actually they they're fans of stuff just like we are of them. So it's really nice to see. Uh, continuing to back on, um, Access Mario. Uh, you probably know him, Mark Day, such a great guy, Mario Marino. Mario's uh, a great guy. Yeah. Um, you talk to him quite quite often. Very, very nice guy. Um, Lyle Ketchum's joining us, says, what's up, everyone? Thomas Santiago says, hey, Eric and Mark and Poison Ivy and everyone in the chat. Uh, we have a real family here in the chat. You're going to get to expect that. When you come back again, by that time, you'll know half of them by name. Uh, Ron Padgett, uh, cake eater, fat boy vibrato, laugh out loud, he says. <laughs> That's a good one. That I am. <laughs> there, and you know what? I've only got a couple of little tiny rules. I'm, I'm not, I'm not too far. I'm not too, uh, too far on the fat side either, but you know, you know, one thing I always say to people and I always like watching Robert Baker. I'm not sure if you follow Robert Baker. He's a young kid. I call him a young kid. He's like, he's old enough to be one of my kids, but I love him to right. death. He just, he had a hundred thousand subs on YouTube and a big mentor to me for doing what I do. One of, one of a few people I really follow. And, um, I always see him sharing some hate stories and, um, like hater things. And he, he gets a lot when you hit a hundred thousand, like you, you probably get a lot more than I would because you have like 15,000 subs and I only have like 3000, but you know, it comes to the territory and they're in proportion. Yeah. But I always tell people if you if you want to get at me, I mean, um, if you or if you want me to stop doing what I'm doing, um, hating is not gonna not gonna do it because the more people give you hate, the more it fuels your passion to do what you love to do. You know what I mean? It's they're not gonna be you. And look what happened yesterday. I, you know, the guy, the guy hated me on YouTube, and then within a few hours, I had all kinds of people commenting on Facebook and you sure and, did. You know, it it, it was. It, it it worked for his demise. Now he's left the internet. I don't know where he is, but he's gone. It it, it didn't bother me. I thought it was actually very humorous. Uh, it used to, when I first started doing this YouTube thing, it it used to really um, I could punch in the jaw. Yeah, it was it was really hurtful, and I and I was wondering, you know, why why do these guys hate me? I'm just trying to make music. I'm just trying to have fun. I'm just showing you guys gear. I, I know I'm not. Uh, a great gifted guitar player, but you know, I'm just doing my thing. Why do you hate me? I, I don't hate you. It's mm. like it used to a lot of used to keep me up at night, and I think, why do they hate me? And then eventually, I just, you know, yeah. If they if they start saying really awful, vile things, then I'll just I'll just block and report it. them. Yeah, I'll block it and 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 get rid of them. But uh, you know, there, that that percentile is probably point. Zero zero one compared to the nice people that are out there. Exactly, a hundred percent. You know, it, it was funny. You know, you'd see a hundred comments or or whatever, how much people liked what you were doing, and then one that would say something stupid, 
and and you would always remember the one that said something stupid and i i changed my mind frame from that that you know no listen to the 99 people mm-hmm. and forget one that's what i tell you the know, junior here too there's some hateful people out there i mean i've got guys that are subscribed to me that that as soon as i post something they go and instantly hate it mm-hmm. you know instantly dislike it because they're just they're just waiting to to do that and i i think it's funny yeah exactly uh, go for it do it you're it subscribed bother. to me you're subscribed to me yeah. i'm it, it put my numbers up and That's thank right. you. And, uh, and then it makes other people post like, why, why did somebody hate this? It's, are they crazy? That's right. And thank you for the, for the bad. Pro- it's like Ozzy used to say, uh, no, no, what I can't remember exactly what he said, but no publicity is bad. Pu- or bad publicity is, is still good. Oh, for sure it is. Uh, uh, you know, if you're in the news, you're in the news. Um, yep. not that the news, but you know, amongst, Social media. Yep, you're in um, people's minds. Yeah, so it's um, you know, I used to let it bother me, and now now I don't. It's just I know, same as me the- too. There came a day where I finally said, "You can't make the world like you." Um, you know, there's your friends are gonna like you, and and your distant friends and your colleagues are gonna like you, whatever. Uh, but you can't make the world uh, like you. And the date when you accept that for yourself, it gives you great sense of uh, uh, r- relief, uh, peace. You know, just uh, everything. He's off your back. That's right. That's right. Um, and I know there's a point I was going to say about that. Yeah, the funny story was uh, Robert Baker had shared uh, on Facebook the one time. One person had commented with him and said um, something, something. You, you're doing this wrong. You're doing this wrong. Uh, don't quit your day job. And he he wrote back and said, well, this is my day job, so I, be- I better not quit it, right? <laughs> YouTube is his job. That's what he does, you know? So And, and instruction, of course, too. But it's just so funny, some of the things you get, right? And one time I got a comment, a person said to me, I was doing a demo video, and I plan on doing a lot more demo videos, especially when people hate them. I want to do them more, um, which is great. And a person had said, it was a demo review on some pedal, and the person said, the, I've now found on YouTube, I found the worst video that ever exists and is now my worst video on the top of my list, whatever. And I wrote the person back and I usually try to, you know, I usually, I usually don't get involved. And if I do, I kill them with kindness. And I was like, um, well, I, I'm, I feel very, very honored. This is a real, this is a real accomplishment for me that I have made your list as the worst video ever. Uh, thank you very much. And thanks for watching. Have an, have, have an awesome day. And the person never got back to me. What could the person say to me after that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, what, your mustache sucks. They're, they're looking for a fight. That's exactly. Bullies, bullies look for a fight behind a, a wall. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, that's what bullies do. And uh, unfortunately, there's some bullies out there, but thankfully, the, most of the people out there are really kind and really nice. And you know, I always, I always say, I'm, I'm the luckiest average guitar player on the planet because of the things that have fallen into my lap. Just because of it. I am not a good guitar player. I'm just an average guitar player. And I've just been really, really lucky to meet the people I've met and work with the people I've worked with. And I just was able to kind of put one foot in front of the other and, and find a path to get me into these, these situations. And it, it's been fun. And, and for all you guys that are out there that are like 20 and 30 and 40 years old that think it's not going to happen for you, I didn't have a break doing stuff like this until I was like 50 years old. That's right. That's right. And I'm very, very in that, neighbor, in that neighborhood too. Like I'm 49 this year. And although I got close to it with my last band, I've had many more good things come to me after the fact, after kind of closing one chapter, uh, the touring and all that kind of stuff. And and I look at it as a blessing in disguise because number one, you know, my age was getting up there. The touring, the touring was starting to kill me. Uh, being a fully a 100% original band, unless you're unless you're the big level band, the pay isn't there. Um, so really, there's a lot of sacrifices to do what you love. I closed that chapter and doing now where I still get deeply in, rooted into music here, talking to great people like you, great people in the chat, having fun, sharing ideas. And I, I like it much better than what I ever did. And I still get to play guitar, which is the, the center of all of it. So I love it. Yeah, it's fun to make music. It's fun to, to be in the industry. And, and uh, yeah, it's life is good. Life is really good. I agree. I agree 100%. I got a really good friend in the chat here as well, too. Um, Kevin Landorf is joining us as well, too. Um, oh, I got to mention one other thing, too, because this is really cool. And this will be the last we talk about um, any of the haters and things like that. Um, Poison Ivy, my Poison Ivy here, she has a little saying that she, she says all the time. It's like these people were, these people are living rent-free in our heads, or we're living rent-free in their heads. You know what I mean? So the people that hate on you, well, we're in your head all the time. So thanks for, thanks for the free room and board. 
That's right. Yeah. Um, so. yeah, for sure. Uh, White Hunt says Randy Rhodes could, could shred like no one else. Yeah, Randy was was a real groundbreaker as well too. One thing I really loved about him, um, and this is be long before the days of you know copy and pasting like we can do today, like I even do myself when it comes to some music stuff. Um, triple tracking his guitars and things like that, and yeah. doing them note for note. Um, I, I imagine you're probably a, a bit of a Randy Rhodes fan. Yes, I, I love Randy. I, I always liked Ozzy stuff. And, you know, Jakey Lee and Randy. And, mm-hmm. Even when Brad Gillis was... Uh, oh, that was, was good. I have to say Brad Gillis and, and Jeff Watson from Night Ranger were were huge to me. They were just... I thought that was the greatest thing on on the planet for a while. I mean, I had all of Night Ranger's records and, you know, I, I saw them live and uh, just an amazing band, amazing writers, great showmen. And, and the guitar playing was just over the top. I think I think I was more of a fan of Brad than Jeff. However, I respected them both. But Brad, uh, amazing. And then with Ozzy, I mean, I really wish. I, I don't know what the whole story was, why he didn't become the main replacement guitar player, contracts, whatever. But man, oh man, did he do that job? Yeah, I, I think I think he left because Night Ranger was starting to do well, and uh, I, I believe I read a story about that where it could be. He, he, opportunity to stay but uh he decided that he wanted to be with his band night ranger and you know in the long run it worked out for him because yeah, night he made ranger the right decision hugely successful and uh and they're still touring that's they're right. still playing so that's right i cool stuff. it was so weird at nam uh this past january i'm sitting there down with my friend sam he may be in the chat i haven't gone down that far yet but sam was taking me out and wine and dining me uh it was a lot of fun and we we're walking around and we're sitting at the bar and i just turned to my left and there's there's brad gillis i'm like like and he's a little bit shorter than i am so i didn't you know you always picture your guitar heroes to be these you know 12 foot tall guys right and he's quite quite a bit shorter than me I'm like oh that's brad and kind of you know whatever and then we would go off to another bar and turn around oh there's brad again i'm like I'm giving you my business card. I gave him my business card. And then I saw him a third time. And it's like, I I don't know who's following who here. It was really, really cool. But just to see someone like who's one of your idols, you know, and you just, you're bumping it uh, elbow to elbow with them, right? It was pretty, pretty cool for a little small town Ontario boy like me. It was cool. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Very, very, a lot of respect for that, man. Um, let me see here. Uh, Bruce is saying, uh, EVH Care TV, really enjoying the shirt. Yeah, Van Halen Rising. Uh, Greg Renoff, the author, was uh, uh, on the show a while back, and he, he, he found out Little Eric was a big fan. So uh, he really hooked up Little Eric. He's my, my little guy. He sent him an autographed copy of Van Halen Rising, uh, some pics, uh, some koozies. Not that Little Eric uses koozies, so now I have the koozies and some, uh, you know, all kinds of really cool stuff. So thank you, Bruce. I appreciate that. And that's first time wearing it. And uh, I have a link down in the chat as well, too. Not in the chat, in the description below Mark's link for his uh, YouTube channel. There's a link to buy the Van Halen Rising from Van Halen Store. So grab that book and get it autographed as well. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Insomnia Matt says, I fancy myself more of a riff player than a lead player. Though lately, Robert Baker's channel has been helping me with my lead play. And I, I, I like to mention Robert because uh, Insomnia Matt told me the other day that he came from Robert's channel. So that's really nice. And I know I'm going to have a couple people coming from your channel tonight. And, and I appreciate the people that you send over this way as well, too. Kevin Landorf is saying, hey, everyone, Ron Paget, hilarious. Uh, John Storm says, practice makes better, not perfect. I agree. Um, that The old cliche, practice makes perfect, never perfect, just makes you better. And, uh, and try to practice as often as you can. The Desk Chicken says, an old fat guy that likes cake, I'm offended. Uh, as an old, oh, he says, as an old fat guy that likes cake, I'm offended. I love that one. That's a good one. Yeah, some of the comments, eh? I love cake. I have been, ever since last night, I, I want chocolate cake so bad. I'm going to have to go out and get chocolate cake, I tell you. You know what you need to do? You need to get chocolate cake and then shoot a video, uh, taking a break from playing, grab a little bite of cake, and then go back to it and do that just for that one fan. I am going to have chocolate cake in my next video for sure. Awesome. And then, I love cake, but you know the thing is with around here, we'll get cake and we end up throwing it out. Like we'll have like a, well, Sandra Lee, she'll make it. And I feel bad because she's the world's greatest cook and she'll make a cake. And I'll only like, I just like to have one piece. It's one of these things where I, I don't have it all the time. And I just like to get my fill, but I can't eat a whole cake. Like not in a weekend, not in a few days. So I, I how about you? If you have one, can you, can you polish it away? I'm a skinny guy and I'll eat the whole thing. There you go. Yeah, I eat the whole thing. Yeah. Not not in a not no, not in a sitting. No, no, no. For a couple of days, I mean, I don't eat a lot. Period. But 
when if it's cake, I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. What I'm gonna do here, guys, as soon as I get down to the bottom of the chat, um, I'm gonna th- mix things up a little bit in some different order. I know we have uh, some great sound uh, just waiting to come out of Mark's guitar. We're gonna jump over and take a look at that. I'm just gonna finish the chat here, and then we'll get some. We'll get him to do a little bit of demonstration with some of the uh, fractal product, and then we'll uh, we'll go back to some really cool questions, some Eddie questions, and a lot of fractal gear and all kinds of fun stuff as well too. Uh, Chlorine Bacon Skin is joining us. Um, let me see here. Mike Ray joining us. Uh, see if I miss anyone else. Uh, Mike, as himself, um, uh, says, Mark Day, my favorite YouTube channel. Thanks, bro. Uh, no problem. And he says, sorry, Eric, your channel is awesome, too. No problem. I'll, I'll gladly sit. I'll gladly uh, take a back seat to, uh, to Mark Day's channel any day. Oh, and there he is, the man I was just talking about, Sam, my, my best buddy from Los Angeles, says, I really can't play a lead. I love riffs, so I would love to be the Malcolm Young in the band. And a lot of people, they, people might laugh at that. But and a lot of people think, oh, Malcolm Young, it's so easy. It's not easy. We talked about this the other day, just being holding back and the Steve Stevens and things like that, playing in the pocket, playing outside of the pocket, uh, you know, playing ten steps away from the pocket. It's not that easy to be that guy. Yeah, and you know what? It's not a competition. It's, it's not. If it makes you smile, it makes you happy, and makes you excited about playing your instrument, then it's not wrong. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, music is music is a gift, and and uh, you know it's a beautiful thing, and and it, it shouldn't be a sport. I agree. Um, so many make it into a sport. It's I not know. A competition. There's no it's first hard. place, second place, third place. I know. A, a friend of mine, you probably know Eric Sands from Positive Grid, um, re- good friend of mine, and I, I learned something from him that was pretty cool. He's he is a, a, a master guitar player. He's really really good himself. He, he gets just as much enjoyment out of shredding on a guitar and, you know, having all these people going, wow, over him. He plays bass in an ACDC tribute band. And just, you know, it's it's relatively, uh, I shouldn't say simple, it's relatively straightforward is the word I'm going to say. Um, and he gets just as much satisfaction out of that, you know, letting the band, you know, kind of be the glue for the band um, and let everyone else go, you know, the Angus, whoever the Angus guy is in the band, playing all the leads and stuff like that. So it is, it's about having fun and it's not necessarily about, uh, you know, and actually Van Halen is a perfect example of that. You get all these young kids today that can learn the riffs pretty close, and then it's like, okay, well, how about uh, let me try the lead now? You play the rhythm. Oh, I can't play his rhythm. They can't play Eddie Van Halen's rhythm because number one, in a lot of cases, it's harder or more unorthodox than the leads, and number two, they've never just taken the time to learn it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I, I see a lot of a lot of young people. You know, they'll be sweet picking like crazy, and I'm like, wow, that's incredible. And then then they go to place an easy passage with some vibrato and bending and it's like it doesn't work it's just it's just it's a forgotten art kind of thing um but there are so many good players out there that can do it all mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I see youtube every day and it's just like oh i know really there's some scary I things saw, out there yeah I, I saw a player today and i can't even remember the guy's name he was playing a les paul through a from mesa mark five somebody okay. sent me a said check this guy out it's just i think he's from russia or something hmm Man, it was just, just killer, killer everything. He was like a, a cross between John Sykes and and uh, Doug Aldridge and and uh, you know Joel Hoekstra and and those those type of players. He was just just uh, such a great, great feel and great vibrato and and very quick. You know, all this double picking and hitting every note. It was it was it was really fun to watch. Oh, that's awesome! And here's what we're gonna do. This is a perfect. This is a perfect segue. We just talked about Les Pauls and some vibrato and things like that. Um, number one, you've, we, you and I were talking about this guitar. I, I don't own a Les Paul. I've had some copies and things like that. I'm mostly all EVH gear. But when you posted the guitar that you have in your hands right now on Facebook, I fell in love with it. Number one, because it looked cool. Number two, because it has a Floyd Rose. I'm gonna to go to the full screen on your screen. One second. Let's keep that baby up. So let's tell tell us the story on this guitar, and then in a couple minutes, Mark's gonna give us a little bit of a sample of it. Tell us how you found this one. Okay, well, um, I'm a big Les Paul fan. Uh, I've had Les Pauls for years. I used to play in the Journey Tribute, and I've had some standards and some customs and uh, some... uh, I had two different access models with the Floyd Rose. I had an Alex Lifeson access and uh, uh, a custom shop access. And I had some hand problems um, that I thought was attributed to the to the guitar, uh, the Lifeson guitar. I thought the the neck was a little wide on it, and it was I was having some stiffness and some 
bending and vibrato issues, which really disturbed me. So I actually got rid of the guitar and um, got myself a, a Jackson PC-1, only to discover that that wasn't the issue. But anyways, mm -hmm. uh, so I was Les Paulless when I came back from the U.S. to Canada, and I was really missing a Les Paul. And I wound up going to the music store in Ottawa, the Long and McQuaid in Ottawa, um, searching for another access because that was that was what I really craved. I like the Floyd Rose. I like the cutaway. Um, I, I like the whole thing about the access. It's a Les Paul with a with a Floyd Rose, and some people will say that's sacrilegious, and and it doesn't sound like a Les Paul. No, it sounds like a Les Paul. It yeah. really does. Except it's got a Floyd on it, which is really good because I love Floyds. Of course. So. We're in the store, Roxy and I, and um, uh, there was an access there, and I was I was about to try the access, and she says, "Well, what about that one?" And she pointed to this one, and I said, "It's a studio." <laughs> yeah, it's a studio. I can't have a studio. I can't have a studio, Les Paul. I've never had a studio. It's like, it's like, you know, <laughs> snobby beneath me kind of thing. And that's not true. It's not beneath me. But um, I wanted I wanted a real Les Paul. I didn't want a studio. That's how she we've says, all oh, been you... trained. We have to have this. Yeah. I have to have the best, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I said it can't possibly be any good. I mean, how can it how can it be any good? So uh, she kept that at me, and she, so I I tried the access, and and the access was really not set up properly, and it didn't it didn't feel like the access that I had before the mm -hmm. two accesses I had before. So. I kind of got bored with that pretty quick, and I said, okay, well, let's go. She goes, you don't want to try that studio. I said, oh, not really. If it'll Come make on, you just... happy. So I, you know, I tried it, and it was just love at first feel, you know. It just, it played like a million bucks. It sounded like a million bucks, and it and it looks like a million bucks. It's got a really nice top on it. It does. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yep, we can. I'm going to go full screen. Uh, it's got a, It's got a gorgeous, you know, flame quilty kind of top on it and uh and it was uh three thousand dollars less than the uh than the access and i have to say i actually like the way it plays and sounds better than my you know my retail sixty four hundred dollar lifeson um for 15.99 it was uh brand new 15.99 amazing amazing deal i haven't even changed the pickups on it yet it's it's the only thing I've done with it is uh, um, Adam Reaver from uh, Futon. Futon. Um, I got a, a brass block from him and uh, put it in, and it made a really nice little difference, and I love it. And uh, I was talking to Adam today um, because I really like a lot of play in my in my Floyd. I like you know I like when you, when you hit it, it just. Mm -hmm flops around like crazy and it also gives when you're bending and stuff a little bit yeah. more than a than a locked bridge and we should note um, too that your trem is floating on that guitar yeah totally floating mm -hmm. uh, that's what i dig i i don't like the i don't like it stopped in in the in the up position mm -hmm. i i want to go both ways yeah. uh, so adam awesome guy very knowledgeable great products can't say enough good things about adam i know um He's going to send me some yellow springs and polish so that I can make this thing a flutter beast, so that I can do the Brad Gillis thing and you'll, with eat. You'll love the you'll, you'll love the yellow springs. Now they're a little too light for me. I use uh, I originally got the red ones from him, um, and they're like super strong. They're almost like elevator cable. Um, so I went with the black, and black is my happy medium for me with a, um, a flush mount, and and I tune down a half a step. So I'm uh, I'm down half a step. I use the black springs, and I use two of those, and they work. But you know one thing, maybe, maybe I, it doesn't look like you've done this yet. For the extra couple bucks, um, what would be the? It's not necessarily going to give you any huge tone difference. The the uh, but a tiny tiny bit. The titanium string lock blocks would be a nice a touch to that guitar, and yeah. the, and the stainless steel hardware as well too. Cause just for just for longevity. I know Steve Stevens has gone with the titanium on on one of his guitars, and he really really. He really, really liked it. I, I hope I'm not wrong on that. I'm, sh I'm sure he told me that he, he did titanium on on one of his Floyd guitars. I think he did. He really liked it. So because yeah, he's a futon uh, cat as well too. So 
I'm sure he's got some of that. But yeah, the and the nice thing is with the stainless steel hardware is it just it's not going to do much as far as the improvement of the tone, but it's just going to save corrosion. And that's going to be a guitar. Now you love that guitar so much, you're going to be playing that one for the next two decades. You know, so that'd be something that will really keep its life in there. But I like the story on that guitar, how it basically called you into that store. That guitar called you into the store, whether you you want to look at it that way or not. But I think it did. It was it was the black sheep of the family for sure. I mean, it was a beautiful looking guitar. It sure looked good on the on the rack, and it was way up on the rack. And but I thought, you know, it's a studio. It doesn't have any binding. It doesn't have any, uh, you know, uh, proper, uh, you know, the the logo in the in the mother of pearl or whatever it is, mm-hmm. Avalon yep. or fake stick. I'm not sure what it is. But <laughs> yeah, it's not a painted on Gibson logo, and, and that really disturbed me for the snob that i am when it comes to gibsons but it sure showed me you know that's right it it plays great and sounds great and i i I just really dig the guitar and it's got a great neck on it because i've got little hands and uh yeah yeah, get right around it of course it stays in tune really well and uh i'm also uh i use nine to 42s and i tune down a half step oh there you go Uh, oh that'd be super super slinky yeah, well, super slinky for a lot of people. It's not really super slinky for me anymore because I'm an old fart. But uh, <laughs> you but, know, but I, nice. and and for the people out there, I used to use a Les Paul with a stop tail bridge and ten to fifty fifty twos, ten to fifty twos tuned to pitch. You and paid I your dues. That, I did that for years, and now I've hurt myself. Yep. And I'm urging you people out there that think that. 10 to 52 sounds so much better. It really doesn't. Eddie uses 9 to 42s and he tunes down a half step and he's always done that. So, and he's got the best, you know, one of the best tones on the, on the planet. So, so there. There you go. (laughs) I I remember having a funny story told me a really, really funny story from Ian Thornley was on the show. And I wish I could remember the story. I have to go back and replay the video. And I'm I'm horrible at requoting people. But it was something along the lines of he's got guitars all over the house, hung up on the wall, stuff like that. And I think he uses like 11s and 12s in some of his guitars. And he says when he's bored and for fun, just to, to kind of give him something fresh, he throws like a set of 10s or 11s on one of his guitars. And I'm like, geez. Then again, you look at his hands, and his hands are about the size of most people's feet, you know. He's a... Man, he's a giant man. What is he? Six foot four or five or something? Well, he's... I'm I'm almost six two, and he dwarfs me, so he's got to be about six five. Yeah, he's got to be six yeah. five. He's a giant guy. Yeah, he is. But I, I got yeah. a real kick out of that. But you know what? It's not about the strength of the strings. And I mean, it takes a real ear to. I mean, I think if people say, "Oh, I can hear the difference between that," I think it's more it's more cosmetics than anything else, or more more eye candy than it is anything else. I think it's testosterone. Yeah, exactly. I, there, it's a better word. I use eleven to. 58s or i use uh, 10 to 52s it's all you know i'm muscle man mm-hmm. um just a little guy with little hands and um i can you know people say well your vibrato is so wide because you use wimpy strings mm-hmm. my vibrato has always been this wide mm-hmm. even when i use 10 to 52s but when i use 10 to 52s and i was playing three nights a week three sets it it uh, over the years it it i hurt myself and yeah and it wasn't worth it. it really wasn't worth it no it's and, not and when I went back to nines, <clears throat> there was there was maybe a little bit of a uh, little bit of tuning for me because I was I was so heavy handed on the on the thicker strings, I had to adjust my playing so that I of wasn't course. heavy. Um, but <clears throat> after I got used to that, there was no difference in the tone. I mean, that's why you have a bass control on your amp or your that's right. or your model, you know you got an EQ on your model. You can just turn the EQ up a little bit. It's easy to compensate going to get the same thickness that's right well listen we're going to jump into some sounds in a minute and what i got a chance to hear this last night mark was playing uh, for me a little bit we've got one of the one of the reasons why we don't do a lot of playing on the show here is unless i can get a good signal sent to me it's not worth it to do it because you can make the world's best guitar player sound horrible by a bad you know a bad sound uh, recording um so and i don't mean a recording but a, a feed so uh mark's got a good feed here and if you you can just noodle whatever you like but um tell us what you're running into and maybe just get us a little bit of demonstration then we'll talk about that product in more in depth in a moment okay so what i'm running through right now is <clears throat> axe effects 2xl and i've got an mfc 101 pedal board to control it and a couple of expression pedals that i use for volume and wah or whatever else i decide to to use as a modifier uh, and i'm running direct into a roland octocapture interface and what you're going to hear is just one side of this. 
it's only um, because Skype is mono. Mm -hmm. You're only going to hear one side. Excuse me while I take a drink. No problem. Water. Um, so this is just my my main preset that I use for my videos and for playing with the band and stuff. Um, it's it's what I dig. Uh, you might not dig it. A lot of people think I have too much gain, uh, but I like gain. I'm a child of the '80s, so mm -hmm. yeah, me too. I'm I'm right there with you. So I'm just gonna be up my alley. So I'll just I'll just give you a little couple of chords and stuff. <laughs> So there's a little bit of man here and there. That's great. It sounds it sounds awesome. I mean, that's some of the best tone I've had on the show here. That guarantee you that. Cool. So that's my main dirty preset. Um, you know, I like a little bit of delay and stuff on it. Me too. Again, I like I like a little bit of grease. Um, a lot of people um, with our product get concerned with um, and any product uh, kind of a. Um, an audio lag between presets. So we have something that we call scenes in our, in our products that allow you to change different bypass states of, of the effects so that there's, there's no, you're not changing the actual preset. You're just changing the bypass states of the individual blocks within the preset. So okay. I'll just give you an example here. I'm going to go from my, my clean, sorry, my dirty, dirty to a clean and, you, you won't hear any lag. So there's, there's no change there at all. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so... Got a little phaser on there. I shouldn't have one, but uh, I don't know where that came from. I think I was, I think I was messing around with a, a little bit of a... Uh, eruption earlier <laughs> so i i added a phase a of course phase we have to have that yeah to the to the preset so that you know Etc. Et but there's you can hear the the phaser kick in there, so and it's beautiful too. It's not overpowering. <laughs> getting lots of thumbs up over in the chat that's for sure that's awesome yeah i won't be doing too much playing tonight i'm having some hand issues so i don't want to no I problem wanna... at all no that's totally fine i just wanted to get a bit of a tonal uh, breakdown and we just talked about our, our brother from another mother uh, mr futon himself is in the chat too adam's here <laughs> adam thanks a lot for your absolutely speedy wonderful service today um i spoke to adam by email and within um uh, less than five minutes, I had a tracking number for some stuff. So You know, I, I got to tell you a funny story about that. Jim Clark was on the show last week from England, from Pro Rock Guitar. He got some stuff from Adam. He got stuff. No, we're talking England for, and from yeah. Adam. He got it quicker than he ordered stuff in, in England. Can you, yeah, be, the, can you believe that? Last, the last time Adam sent me something from the States to Canada, um, I got it faster than 
I think I got it faster than I would have if I would have been still living in the States. It was yeah. just like, it was incredibly fast. Yeah, and it's good. It's, it's thorough and detailed. Everything is good. Yeah. Awesome company. Good stuff. Thanks for joining, Adam. I'm going to go backwards a little bit in the chat, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to um, kind of go back over a couple questions. We're doing pretty good on time. 10.05. We've got about 25 minutes left. Uh, Sam5150, uh, thumbs up. And he had mentioned something earlier, too, and I, I have to just kind of paraphrase what he said because I forget, and I've scrolled a little too far. But he said he had an Axe Effects on loan from one of his buddies, and I won't say who the buddy is because I think I know who it is, and I, I, you'll know who he is, too, um, probably one of your artists. Um, but he really enjoyed it, so very, very cool. And I have not played one yet, and I'm going to make a point of doing that. I'm, I'm, I've got the bug, trust me. Um, let me see. Um, Andy Pesia says, Mark is much like Phil X. Both make me excited to pick up my guitar. You know, that's that's a good thing. That's one thing I can say is a great, great thing. There's many, many guitar players. Mark is one here for sure for me as well, too, inspires me to pick up. Anybody that you can find that plays an instrument, whether it's guitar, bass, keyboards, whatever, drums, and sometimes it could be uh, a person of the other instrument that you don't even play can inspire you to play. That's something that you really, really need to uh, be thankful for. Subscribe to that person on YouTube if that's if they found them on YouTube. Inspiration comes in all shapes and sizes, and it's nice to recognize it when you see it. So I agree with you on that one, Andy. Uh, Rick Kreifeld is still st joining us here in the chat as well, too. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, Futone says, postal upgrades. He should start it. You know what? If if the uh, the guitar upgrades business never works out, he's doing great with it, he should get into the the next UPS or whatever it's going to be. Whatever is working for him, become the new, yeah. new courier because he's doing a really good job with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Getting it across order with no problem is, yeah is a magical thing i know speaking of which i was bummed today i was looking forward to doing another unboxing i've got another big shipment coming from australia and tell me about it i don't know how they get it here this fast i know that's they pay a pre premium price <laughs> i can get stuff from australia here to canada to my door in four days and it takes me if i was to send adam something from canada to, to adam it would take me probably two weeks he gets it here to yeah. me in a couple of days but canada sucks when it comes to you probably know what it's like shipping out of the country it's a drag yeah, shipping out of Canada is, is a nightmare. Yeah, I mean, Night yeah, wait till Christmas and have Santa Claus carry it or something, get it around the world a lot faster. But uh, let me see if I missed anything else here. Um, so let, let's actually get into it. Let's talk a little bit about, um, I know I missed a few comments, and I apologize if I missed some um, questions. But let's talk about the very the variable or the variations in your products that you have. I'm just learning the product line, you know, in the last few months. But people getting into it, one thing that scares me as a guitar player, and I want you to debunk this when it comes to your product, um, I tend to get worried about the learning curve. Can I just pick up this thing and start playing right away, or do I have to go through, you know, menus and things like that? And maybe to, for the first time guitar player, what are they going to experience? Well, there's factory presets to get you started. So there's a lot of cool things. There's a lot of things that that show the, the what the unit can do, you know, special effects and stuff. But there's some there's some cool uh, basic sounds. Um, there's with all our products, there's an um, a Mac or Windows editor that that you can download free from us, and that makes life so much easier. Um, why don't I? Why don't I? I think I can share my screen. Try it, sure. With, and I'll put you on full screen once you get it. Okay, let me see us first. Mm -hmm. Let me just. There's me. <laughs> and I get my. There you go. So let me just make this a bit bigger for you as soon as it syncs up with my unit. You guys are really getting a treat tonight. So th this is the preset that we're that we're <laughs> we're looking at right now that I that I just used and and I've got all the scenes here. So basically, it, it's like building a rig or a pedal board or a rack system. So you, you've got your your guitar that comes in and and there's a, a noise gate right at the right at the intro, so you can squash any any noise from single coils or light fixtures or anything like that that's coming into your guitar. And then it just goes out of there, and a cable to I've got a phaser here that's off at the moment, a flanger that's off, a drive pedal, an amplifier block, um, and this is where people get confused because there's so many menus within the amp, but you don't have to go there. You just go like the front of your amp where you would have your preamp gain and your bass and your middle and your treble and your presence and your depth and all that stuff is straight on the front page, and you don't have to go any further than that. Okay. Uh, um, you know, might be fun is to just, uh, if you have a minute, let's just, um, 
let's just make a preset. Okay, let's do that. That's great. Let me just find a, a blank one. Let me just go here. That would be easier. Sorry, I scrolled too many times. And it's well, it's okay. Back. Take all the time you want. I did too many, too much mouse diving here. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to go here. It's a blank preset. Then I'll switch over. So I'm just going to make a cable go from the beginning to the end. So from my input to my output. Okay. And I'm going to start with an amp block. And I'm going to put my glasses on so I can actually see my screen. So right now you would be clean, completely clean, I would assume, right? It would just be a guitar. Yeah, uh, unprocessed. play that for you. I don't know if you can hear that. Perfectly, yep. So now I'm going to add an amp block. And I'm going to pick something that's familiar to me, which is uh, when you bring the camera back up to me, mm -hmm. you'll see my, my Friedman uh BE100 behind me, okay. and this is actually modeled after my particular amp. So okay. Cliff took my amp and actually used that as the model. He took it all apart and and scoped it and listened to it and did all wow. kinds of things. And made made a, a Freeman HP. So this is all set up so that it's absolutely flat. Everything's at 12 o'clock, and I'm going to make a cabinet now. So we need to have a cabinet with our amp, or it's not going to sound great. Mm -hmm. so Here's, you've got a list of speakers that come with the uh, Oh, geez, nice. All kinds of them there. And also the marshals that are behind me. Here's one of them, this one here. This is actually my marshal. Okay. So I'm going to do something here. I'm just going to make it stereo. Nice. And I don't want to have the same cabinet. I'm going to have a different cabinet. So I'm going to... There was a nice... Um, oops. A nice uh, mix here. This one here, this own hammer. Okay. So that comes with the unit. It's all with the uh, Axe Effects and the AX8. Get those cabinets for free. Um, so right now, all I've got is an amplifier and a cabinet. <laughs> Sorry, I had my front pickup on. So that's just the basic sound. So I'm going to give myself some gain here. So that's, you know, that's how easy it is just to get a sound out of the thing. I love it. You know, and let's let's do what everybody does is put a drive pedal in front of it. Because <laughs> again. And I'm squealing just like a real amp. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to choose what everybody, you know, kind of uses a uh, an Ibanez tube screamer and they bring the drive down a little bit. Mm -hmm. They turn the level up. The old trick from the 80s. Mm hmm and sounds pretty all right right i can hear some except ball to the wall there a little bit yeah exactly so let's let's give it some fun here let's give it a little bit of delay yeah, of course and we're going to choose a stereo delay even though we're running in mono mm -hmm. i'm just going to turn the ratio a little bit so it does a little bit of ping ponging for me i like that mm -hmm. And we got some delay. That's beautiful. And that's no reverb and we've got ambiance there. Yeah, so let's let's add one more thing that I like to do is I like to add a pitch detune. Okay. And do the Van Halen thing, which is eleven cents down or something like that. Yeah, we'll try 11. Okay. So minus 11. I used to go 11 net uh, left and then a positive 11 to right. That's right. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. 
So but we're going to get the balance tone out of this somewhat. <laughs> How's that? I love it. Now, just for fun, I want you to stay in that patch and go to your neck, or not your neck pickup, your middle pickup. Um, so you got both the, both pickups on and roll your volume back a little bit and show what people, that's going to get some eddy tone as well too. Try to do some kind of open chords and stuff. <laughs> go That's such a hard song to do. It is. That's shuffle, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> but that's, uh, you know, that's... How long did that take to make a preset that sounds pretty decent? Just a couple minutes. Just a couple minutes. <laughs> Of course, you don't need that much chorus. If you don't want that much chorus, you can just bring it down in the mix. Yeah, so that that was simple. That was very simple. So you answered my question. You debunked my my fear because my fear is um, I'm not one of these guys that likes to dive deep into menus. Now, I, I think your answer to the question was is you can dive as deep as you want or you can just go right off the get-go. And this is something I know I could handle. Um, and guys that aren't really tech savvy, like I'm, I consider myself a fairly tech savvy, a very tech savvy person, but people that aren't as much can get right into it as well. And I had a lot of people, I saw it lighting up, everyone saying, I want one, I want one. Let's talk about how they get one. Uh, and in this case, you guys sell direct to the to the customer, don't you? Direct. I should tell you about the other products too. Sure. Because we have, we have the Axe FX, which is the big fellow. It's the rack mount unit and it come, and you need to get the you don't need to get the foot controller, but the foot controller mates with it. And that's our big unit. That's our flagship, and it has the most CPU processing power. You can have multiple amps, like you can have two amps running at the same time, or, or what I've done in the preset that I have that I use is I use a cl uh, an amp for clean sounds and an amp for dirty sounds. Okay, nice. Uh, and without any lag, so um, that's what the big guy does. And then behind me, I don't know if you can see that, yep. but I've got my my AX8 live board. Uh, and and this is really set up. This is really fancy because uh, Nice Rack Canada out of Toronto um, made a live uh, rig for me. But the integral part of this is the the AX8, which is the little brother of the Axe FX, and it sounds exactly the same as the Axe FX. Oh, it good. just has a little bit less CPU power, so you might not be able to have you know, two delays, a reverb and a pitch detune and a wah and a flanger all in the same preset. You might have to back off the reverb. Okay. Uh, but, and also you can't do two amps at the same time. Okay. But you can X, Y, you can have, you can have an X and a Y amp. So, but there's going to be a slight little lag when you switch between X and Y. Okay. But other than that, the unit is, um, it sounds exactly the same. So if you bring up a preset in your Axe effects and duplicate that preset on the AX8, it's going to sound exactly the same. Um, so a lot of guys are going with this because it's an all-in-one unit. Um, it's portable. It sounds just as good as the Big Brother. And for most people, they can get away with less CPU power than the big guy. Sure. Um, and there's all kinds of guys, you know, you mentioned the haters. I know we want to go back to the haters, but uh, one of the guys that posted on the haters thing was uh, Neil Zaza, who's mm -hmm. a phenomenal guitar player. Yes. That's what he uses. Um, the the another, board. Yeah, another phenomenal guitar player that is in our own country, uh, Pete Lesbrance from Harem Scarum. Mm -hmm. That's his latest record that sounds absolutely amazing. Is all AX8. Incredible. Um, guys that use the AX8 are guys like um, you know uh, Keith Howland from Chicago. He has one as a. As a backup, he uses his Axe effects for the most part. But when he does 
uh, fly dates. to some point yep. and stuff. Um, he uses uh, an AX8, and it sounds exactly the same as the uh, the Axe FX. So it, it's a real good seller for us, and and it it brings Fractal's high quality modeling and effects into the realm of of people with a with a that don't have a squillion dollar budget. Yeah, know, that's right. Unit sells for you know um, almost a thousand dollars less than the big guy, so it, it's really attractive to people that want to get into the modeling and, and um, you know, want some really high quality sounds because there's other models, modelers out there with, with, you know, prettier interfaces and stuff, but it doesn't sound like a fractal. Yeah, that's right. Here's fractal is, is world class. sounds amazing. I agree with the that. Other, the other unit that we have, and, and you can't see it right now, but is an FX8, and that's the fractal effects only. And, and you know, so if you, if you dig your EVH amp and you, you don't want to get – you know, you don't want to go down the modeling route, but you want to have fractal effects and amp switching capabilities. That's that's the one you want, the FX8. So gotcha. that's a really cool box too. And it's a setup the same way as the AX8 uh, in a floor unit with with its foot switches, and um, it's it's a really cool unit too. And and uh, I don't know if you can see my you can see my big rack there and pedal board with my Friedman. Mm-hmm. My FX8 takes 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 it so that I don't need to use that. Uh, actually, I've got my FX8 right here. Oh, fantastic. I'll show it to you. Oops, still plugged in. And this is the FX8, and that's the effects only unit. Okay, and nice. This here, This guy here replaced my entire big rack over there full of pedals and rack units and weighs a 1,000 pounds. And sounds great, but this sounds better. And you could carry that in overhead almost. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It sounds amazing with my Friedman head. I've got a couple good questions here. These are really good questions, and I want you to answer them because you're the, you're the expert when it comes to this. First of all, that's awesome. Um, two questions from Neil Banbury. Uh, he says, how user-friendly is it to run into a PA? Um, and then I actually, and, and then a couple other fans were answering his question. And... Sam, my friend Sam's asking, what's the best way to run the AX at home? So if you can answer both those questions, how, how user-friendly is it for a PA and a bar? Let's say you want to plug in and just go. Um, absolutely super. That's what I, I run either my Axe FX or my AX8 uh, direct into the PA and also into uh, an in-ear monitoring system. Nice. So I use in-ears. Um, and the thing, if anybody that's used in-ears with a conventional guitar and a microphone, when they get those in-ears, the guitar sounds like a mosquito. It sounds awful. Mm-hmm. Axe effects, it sounds lovely. It sounds huge. It sounds like you're, you, you're listening to a great recorded CD or, or record. It's, it's a life changer. Um, so that's, that's what I do. Now, other guys, they'll run a feed that goes to the front of house. And they might still like their 412s or their 212s, and, and they don't want to give that up. They want to feel the, the wind hit the back of the pants, and, and that's cool. You can absolutely do that because there's two sets of outputs on our units. So you can send one output to the front of house, and you can send an, another output that's un, it does not have cabinet emulation if you don't want it to. Right. And you can send that out to a power amp and your 212s or your 412s or your 112s or whatever floats your boat, and you can absolutely do that. Or you can also send out a duplicate feed to a full range system, like a, a FRFR, they call it, flat response, full range monitor, powered monitor. And, I, and I've got some Friedmans here that I use just as a, uh, they sound really good. And, and when I'm at home and I want to rock out, I just I just turn the, you can see one in the corner there a little bit. That way. Yeah. Yep. That way. Yeah, I can see the wedge a little bit. Yep. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, they sound really good, too. So a lot of guys use FRFRs and then go to the front of house as well. Uh, some guys use uh, a power amp and their conventional uh, 212s, 412s, 112s. Um, other guys can st- still what they use is a four cable method, which they'll go into. They'll, they want to use modeling for certain things, but they also like their own head at, as, at the same time. So they'll, they'll run some. They might like the clean sound of their head, mm-hmm. but they are modeling for the distorted sound so they can run effects in front of the amp use the amps preamp or use the fractal uh, modeling and then also have effects in the return of the uh, the effects loop 
um, so that they can have delays and reverbs and stuff in the effects loop of the amp too. So it's best of both worlds and, and all our products do the four cable method. Oh, fantastic. Um, yeah, someone asked about the four cable. I think it might've been Neil as well too, the four cable method. Yeah. Now, um, how would you use your AX8 at home? Mm -hmm. uh, I just run mine. Um, I, I've, I've done several things. I can, I can run into my uh, XLR out into my recording interface and play through my, my M audio speakers or, mm -hmm. or computer speakers. Sounds amazing. Um, <clears throat> another thing I've done just to record, if I, if I want to record something fast and, and quick, when I just have my laptop with me, I have a cable that goes two quarters, so a quarter inch, quarter inch and it goes to a TRS mini um, on the other end, and I plug that into the input of my, my MacBook. No and way. I can, I can record and I can listen on my MacBook if I want to, or I can use headphones and listen through my MacBook. Nice. The AxeFX has a headphone output. The AX8 does not have a headphone output. Okay, so good to know. You can either plug into your, into your computer system and hear it that way or plug into uh, computer speakers or studio monitors or FRFRs. Um, some guys, they say, well, I really want to use headphones. Well, there's lots of headphone amplifiers out there. Yeah. You can buy little headphone amplifiers for $29. Yeah, little Behringer things or anything. And use that. So a lot of guys use that as well. Perfect. Well, good to know. So there, I guess long story short is there's an application for any, any use pretty much. Yeah. yeah, nothing is wrong, and, and there's a lot of different ways. And, and you know, the AX8 and the Axe Effects both have uh, digital outs on them as well. Oh, good so to know. You can go spit it into your recording interface as well. That's perfect. We've only got probably about five more minutes left here, and I, here's a question I'm going to ask you. There's a lot of good questions we're going to save for a rainy day for sure, because I know we're going to, the fans are going to want you back for sure, and I'm not sure how much you can you can talk about this as far as um, it's a Metallica question, but I, there's something that really sparked my interest when you said, you know, a lot of people that are used to using in ears are used to hearing like this mosquito tone, and then of course with Fractal it sounds so beautiful. And I come across this article the other day. It was on Metallica, and they were raving over the the Meyer front of house sound and all this other kind of stuff. And it went further down in the article to talk about how James and and Kirk have switched from their messes and the Randalls to to Fractal products. Um, now here again, you comment as much as you can say, or, and I'm not sure how much is public knowledge and what isn't. Is, did that have anything to do with the fact that they liked how their guitar sounded through any years? And maybe you can elaborate on that a little bit. Um, I was not involved in that project, mm -hmm. so I really don't know the ins and outs of it. All I know for sure is that they're very happy with the sounds, and uh, that's about all I know about the, the Metallica thing. They, they have... Uh, they have rigs set up in different parts of the world with fractals, and that's all they're using is the fractals now, and, and they just love it. Fantastic. So much easier, too, I would imagine. You know, I mean, The thing is, we're, we're, you and I, for our age, we're used to seeing these you know, you know, know, 60 Marshall stacks or whatever the cabinets are in the back, whether they're using them or not. But we, exactly, exactly. We're used to seeing that. Now we're getting used to, now we get these stages where, you know, the janitor will come out and sweep it. There's no amps in the way. You know, it's it's amazing. It's, it's hard to get used to, but I mean, the yeah. tone's getting better and better. Music music has changed so much. Um now, now you're running into bars and clubs and and venues, casinos and stuff where they don't want any stage volume. They want everything. I know. To and and that's forcing people to go in ears. And um, and fractal is is leading leading the path for that kind of stuff because it does sound good in in ears and it does sound good in FRFR monitors. If you know and, and you know what you hear me playing through tonight. Um, it's at a whisper volume here, and it sounds so good just yeah. through my little speakers and through my headphones. Um, it's I, I never plug into the stuff behind me. I know. I can see that. Because the fractal stuff is instant gratification. It sounds great right away, um, and it sounds great at low volume. I'm not disturbing anybody in the house. Um, they can hear the televisions. Uh, I can play for hours down here, and not nobody, nobody can hear me. And and it, and it's very satisfying because you get this great big huge tone out of your studio speakers in front of you, and and you're not killing anybody. That's right. And, and it feels good. It feels good under the fingers. You're still it's inspired. Not like, it's not one of those things where well it doesn't feel the same. Yeah, yeah. it does feel the same. It does feel great. So um, it, it's a it's a wonderful thing. And and I was turned on to Fractal before I started working for them. Long before I started working for them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was big into tube amps and, and loved my tube heads and stuff and, and even worked for, you know, Friedman Amplification for a while out in Los Angeles. And uh, e even when I was doing that, and I, I was still 
playing my fractal. Uh, the fractal was just, just, uh, you know, you want to record something, it's, it's right there. It's, there's no placing microphones, and it sounds the same on the next session and the next session. Yeah, uh, capture when inspiration hits as opposed to waiting for it, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's nothing that kills inspiration more than, than, than aiming a microphone for six hours. Oh, I tell you, I, I agree with that 100%. Here's, here's a good question, and, and um, it's, it's going to talk about a couple other brands, so I know you'll be fair to the other brands, but at the same time, it's, I think it's a good question. Neil Banbury is saying, give us, give us your best sales pitch why a person would buy a fractal over a Kemper or a Helix. And I know every, every product out there has its, its positives and negatives. Uh, what would you say a person would be making a good decision uh, purchasing your product? Um, look at our artist page. Mm -hmm. Yes, I looked at it today, which was massive. And look at their artist pages. There you go. Uh, there's, there's a reason why why those artists are. We don't give any of our stuff to anybody. Exactly. We don't give. They pay the same price that everybody else pays, and they still have it. Mm -hmm. Where other companies are, you know, they might be giving their stuff away. And uh, I mean, I've worked. You know, I, I've heard some of the other stuff, and and you know what, you you can get good tones out of it. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's no question about it. I I believe fully that our modeling sounds amazing, and I think if you take if you if you go out and you're able to get those three products in a in a row and run them through speakers, and you play them and you listen to them, you're gonna walk away with the frack. That's right. Cutter Savage is saying doesn't Vi use a fractal, and yes, Steve is actually on that uh, that artist roster as well too. Take a look at that, and actually, I want you guys to do this uh, after the show's done tonight. I have not only links to to Mark's web, uh, not web page, his YouTube channel. I also have links to Fractal down here below, and I want to ask you one final question because we and Adam is still here, uh, Futon Adam. One thing I always praise Adam on with his with his business is his pre sales support, pre sales and post sales support. Uh, you can ask Adam questions about what should I do for my guitar and what blah, blah, blah. Does Fractal have some kind of pre-sales questions if someone's really got the bug they want to buy? Can they talk to some staff and ask them some questions? Absolutely. We, you send us an email, sales at fractalaudio.com, and somebody will be helping you out right away. Um, our after-sales support is, is world-class. You can ask anybody that that has had you know difficulties on the road or whatever. You know something got smashed by a truck or the guitar player dropped it or the <laughs> bass player stepped on it or whatever. Something went wrong with the unit. Um, our guy Charlie uh, is so fast at repairs. You I mean you send your thing in, and it's it's not like you have to wait a month or two months to get it back. He's he's on the bench with it, the day of receiving it or the day after, and he's got it back to you within two days. That's incredible. Uh, and Sam has a question. He says, uh, will Fractal always be a direct seller? Do you have plans in the future of going to um, a retail establishments, or is it, is it better controlled by going direct? We're a small company, so at this time, um, I would say that we're going to stick with direct, but you never know what the future is going to bring. Right. I'm not involved with that. Yeah. Um, my my role at Fractal is, is, not, is not that type of thing, so I, I find out basically when the rest of the world finds out yeah and, in a magazine advertisement or something kind of yeah but from what i what i understand is that you know direct works for us it, it keeps us it keeps us close to the customer i like that yeah and and we're able to provide direct support and and we're we're eager and willing to do that and it you know it's it's a growing company but if we keep it if we keep the the small company kind of mindset then I, th I believe that that keeps people very happy i agree with that everyone's going to feel like they're their only customer because they're going to be treated that way i like that yeah, yeah. and everybody's treated very well at fractal that's for sure it's uh, we, we we value our customers and we're eager to help them out we have a wonderful forum and a wonderful community where people help out each other um and and there's no haters that's good <laughs> You know, if you got a question and you go to our forum, you, you, you're not going to be ridiculed. Yeah. You're going to be, you're going to be answered by really knowledgeable, knowledgeable people. And, and some of the people that, that are just in our community, they don't work for Fractal. They're very, very knowledgeable and very helpful, and they, they love this stuff. They just... They well, they're guitar geek. Yeah, they're geeks like us. Yeah, they love to share. It's not one of these uh, anger-based places. It's, it's, very, it's very giving. So, um, 
yeah, come and check out the Fractal Forum if you have any questions, for sure. Oh, great. I'm really happy to hear that because that's something I've always praised Adam on with his business. So that's I wouldn't direct people to other businesses if I didn't know because my name's on the line too. You know, if I, well, Eric says to go to these guys and then they were jerks, I would never do that. So uh, that's good. So another friendly place to go uh, conduct some pre-sales. And I appreciate that. That's awesome. So everyone check out Fractal at the end of the show. So I'm going to wrap up here in just a moment. Uh, we have a lot of people in the chat saying they'd love to have you back. So I'm going to get you back uh, to, towards the end of the summer possibly. Possibly, um, maybe even sooner. I know we've got so many questions didn't even touch on tonight, but I'm glad we got a chance to hear it. Uh, it was a real treat. It was ear candy for all of us tonight, and I want to thank you very, very much for uh, taking your time out on a Friday evening and uh, spending some time with uh, the fans here and, and myself. I appreciate you having me, and uh, I had a blast. Uh, I wish I could have played a little bit more. Oh, but it's all I'm, good. Uh, I'm having some hand problems. so It's all good. Uh, no problem. You treated us for sure. And trust me, the Van Halen fans uh, got their, their dosage for sure. It was great. I mean, myself too. I'm always trying to pretend like this is all for the fans here too, which it is, but I'm getting my my little fix of Van Halen too. So I love it. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, it's good. So I'm going to say goodbye to you off the air. I'm going to roll the credits here in a moment. I want to thank everyone for joining us. Um, I'm going to let the road jacket contest run over the weekend uh, because the road shipment was supposed to come in today. I have the jacket here. It's physically in my hands, as you guys have seen it. Um, so I'm giving away a road jacket. The only reason why I'm going to let that uh, go over the weekend because I'll be unboxing the other bunch of stuff from Road on Monday. So I'm going to do an unboxing show on Monday, uh, you know, if providing DHL shows up. Um, and I'll do that so the contest runs over the weekend. You guys have still got time to enter the uh, Wolfgang uh, Standard Guitar Contest. That's going to end in about a week. So there's some great video submissions coming in there, some funny ones, some serious ones, and everywhere in between. Uh, so I uh, appreciate everyone for participating in those contests. Just have a fantastic weekend. Hopefully the weather is good in your area, and uh, I really wish uh, the, uh, the, the best for the weekend for everyone. I look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, we're going to talk to you real soon. I'm going to say goodbye to Mark Day off the air here. So everyone, have a good one. Until next time, cheers. My name is Eric, and I'm playing Wolfgang Guitar. Video production services provided by Design39 Media. Visit design39media.com for all your website, photography, and video production needs.